let's look at the visualization of the joints in a slightly different way. So we could use that, we could use Venn diagrams to represent this. Okay, so here, uh, the circle on the left hand side represents the first data frame or X and the circle on the right represents Y, right? So when you do an inner join, you're basically saying, show me only those rows in the result for which there's a match between both the tables, right? So only the matches would appear here. Left join, obviously, all the matches plus the left with no match on the right will appear. Uh, right join is all the matches plus the right which has no matches will appear, not the left. And full join, all the rows will appear. All the matches and all the mismatches as well will appear, right? Only thing is, for the matches, you will have columns coming from both uh, the, the X and Y. For the mismatches, you'll have only columns coming from either X or Y with the other ones being NA or missing values. Okay, now uh, when we are doing joining, till now we have not uh, considered a situation where there are any duplicates, right? So for example, if you let's say join the flights table with your air, 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 airlines table, okay? So now in the airlines table, there is no duplicates for, there are no duplicates for the carrier column, right? Because uh, in the airlines table, you've got only one row per airline or one row per carrier. But on the right hand side, if you, I mean, on the other table, which is the flights table, there will be many rows for carrier, right? So if you join these two tables by carrier, then the carrier column, the particular value of carrier has many duplicates on the flights table. Right. So now we need to understand how this joining stuff is going to work in that scenario. Okay, so this is the case here. Okay, so let's say we've got uh, the tables as defined here. Okay, and let's say we, we've got the two tables and we can, it's easier to look at it from a diagrammatic point of view, right? So you've got duplicates here, x11, x22, x32, x41, right? So this is the column on which we are performing the join, right? So think about it like as if this is your uh, uh, airlines table, right? And this is your FAA, the airline code, and think of this as the actual name of the airline. Okay, you can think of it like that. And think of this as the flights table. Obviously, the same airline can occur many times, right? So here's a scenario where you are joining the two of them by a particular column, but there are duplicates in one of the tables. Right, so in that case, let's see how it works. Okay, so one has a match with one here. So that, so X1, Y1 is going to appear in the result, right? X1, 1, Y1, this represents this particular uh, point. Okay, X2 has a match with two here. So X2, Y2 is going to appear here. X2, Y2, that's fine. X3 has a key value of two. It again has a match here, right? So this key, of two is occurring in two places. So obviously both of them have a match. So now X3, Y2 is going to appear in the output. Okay, so that is X3, Y2 appearing in the output. Okay, and then finally X4 has a match with one. So X4, Y1 is going to appear in the output. Okay, so it, although it's a left join, all the columns, uh, all the rows here had matches. So there are no NAs that need to appear. Okay, so this is how the join is going to work. Okay, now think of a, conceptually think of what is going on here. So I've got X11, let's say this one is a code of a particular airline and we want to add the airline name as well, right? So you're essentially what you're doing is you're using this code one, going to this table and finding out the value of Y1 corresponding to one and then you're adding it on. Okay, that's really how this join stuff is working. Okay, so uh, if you have the uh, plane, uh, the flights table, the airline table, the flights table has uh, origin, uh, sorry, uh, carrier. And corresponding to every carrier, you want to go to the carrier table, find the name of the carrier and bring it along. So you're doing that by doing a join on that particular field carrier. That's really what's going on here. So conceptually, you can think of it like that. Okay, of course, if there are duplicates in both the tables, this is exactly how it works, right? So now we know that, uh, you know, just put dots corresponding to the matches and include all the corresponding results in the output.
Okay, so that's very simple and pretty straightforward. So again, this is just the code for you to test this out. You could run the code and test it out for yourself. Okay, till now, we have explicitly specified the column by which we want to perform the join. Right, So we said by equals key. And of course, the key is not anything special. It's just the name of the column in that particular uh, table. Right, So in this column, it's called key. In this column also, it's called key. And we are saying join both the tables by the uh, column whose name is key. So that's how we are doing uh, the join here. Okay, so uh, we have explicitly specified by. Now sometimes you can leave it out. Uh, okay, this we've already seen this. Right, again we have said by equals key. Okay, now sometimes what happens is uh, the the names match exactly like like they did in the previous example. Right, so in this, uh, uh, if uh, so if you leave out the by, so for example, suppose we did flights to left join where the flights to was uh, a table we created by taking only some of the columns from flights. So if we simply did flights to left join weather, right? In this case, flights uh, flights two has the same column names as flight for the columns that we selected. So it has columns called year, month, day, hour, and origin. Weather also has columns called year, month, day, hour, and origin. Okay. So if you simply did left join weather, in other words, you simply said join flights two and weather. And you didn't specify the columns on which to actually join. Like we did earlier, we said by, right? So in this case, by is unspecified, right? If you leave by unspecified, then what it's going to do is it's going to join by all the columns which have the same name, right? So in this case, it's going to join by year, month, day, hour, and origin. Year, month, day, hour, origin, because exactly those are the uh, columns which have matching names in both the tables. Okay, so instead of the key match being just one column like we did earlier, we were just saying, okay, the key one here matches the key one there, right? Instead now, the matching would mean that all of these values are equal. In other words, the year from flights is equal to the year and weather. The month from flights is equal to the month from weather. The day from flights is equal to the day from weather. Hour is equal and origin is also equal. When all the columns match, only then it's it considered to be a match. Okay, then uh, the, the results would appear here. Okay, if there are any flights for which uh, there are no matching, uh, there is no matching key in weather, of course you're doing a left join, so that would still appear with all the weather columns being uh, NA or empty. Okay, now incidentally, when you do a join, the result is going to have all the columns, just like we saw in pre previous examples, right? Uh, the, the columns of this table as well as the columns of the other table, both of them will appear in the result. <coughs> okay, so when you have matching names and you want to join them, then you can leave out the by and it will join automatically, but you have to be careful. You have to make sure that uh, the matching names mean the same thing. We will shortly see an example where the matching names actually don't mean the same thing. Okay. So here we've got, a, this example is exactly what I'm talking about. Suppose you did uh, flights uh, and you join name uh, planes by tail number. Okay, so this is fine. Uh, you, 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 you're doing the flights left join by tail number, right? So uh, the tail number is the planes. And for every flight, what it's going to do is it's going to add the plane information, right? But planes, if you looked at flights and planes, flights has a column called year okay which is indicating the year uh, which is basically used to identify the date on which a particular flight took place now planes also has a column called year okay so if you simply said flights left join planes and left out the by then the join would look for a match of year and a match of tail number right but the meaning of year in the planes table is very different from the meaning of year in the flights table in the planes table year is talking about the year in which that particular plane was manufactured okay so you will see values like 1980 and 1990 1992 uh, and so on even maybe even older 1965 right so that is that year although the column name is the same is talking about the date of manufacture of the aircraft whereas year in flights is talking about the year of the on uh, the uh, you know as part of the date on which the flight actually occurred 
right? So the meaning is very different here. If you don't specify anything by, then it's going to join by both uh, planes and tail number, by, by uh, tail number and year, and you'll get crazy results. So you have to be careful. So if you have matching names, but you want to use only a subset of the matching names for joining, then also you will have to explicitly specify you're joining them by which particular column. Okay, so that is very, very important to, to consider. Okay, so that's what I was mentioning. Year also matches, but it means something different in these two tables. Now, there's another important point to consider when you do something like this, right? So you've got matching column names, but you're using only a subset, right? But I had already told you that when you do a join, all the columns are going to appear, right? So now you're going to have a column called year coming from planes, uh, from uh, flights, and you're also going to have a column called year coming from planes. How does that work? Right. So let's run the query and see the results. Right. So now the result is going to have two columns called year. Right. And the way it's going to do is it's going to say year dot x and year dot y. Okay. So it's telling us year from uh, the first table and year from the second table. Okay. Of course, it's only using x and y. It's not using uh, the actual names. X indicates the table on the left y indicates the table on the right. Okay, so that's what the x and y mean. So this is telling us clearly that these two years are actually different. And of course, you can see the values are different, right? All the year values in our flights table are two, 2013, whereas here you see many different year values which are much less because these, are, uh, these represent the year in which the particular aircraft was actually manufactured, this particular aircraft was manufactured. Okay. Of course, this table has the resultant table has many columns, uh, which are not shown here. So, if you had two columns both with the same name year and year, that would be ambiguous, right? Because you won't know what the column names are actually standing for, in in a real scenario. In this case, of course, you know you can guess, but in general, if you have two columns with the same name, it's going to be problematic. Of course, the system won't allow it as well. It disambiguates by putting a dot x and a dot y just for our convenience okay now sometimes you may have names which simply don't match at all right so for example you've got uh, uh, you're joining with airports right so first let's consider just the first one flights left join airports right but in the airports table the airport code is called FAA in the flights table the airport is called origin and destination okay so now suppose you want to take every flight and you want to include the name of the origin airport. So you will say flights left join airports. But now I want to say I want the destination column of the flights table of the left hand table to match the FAA column of the right hand table. Right, Left hand table is flights because that occurs first. You're joining it with airports, okay, which is occurring on the right. That's the second table, right? So here you're saying destination from flights should match FAA from the airports, right? So of course, you know that the meaning of the two fields is the same. They are both airport codes, but they happen to have different names within, the, within their individual tables. And therefore, we need to explicitly indicate join this column with this column, this column from this table to this column in this table, okay? Of course, you may want to join by origin or you may want to join by destination. So I've got two different queries if you want. Of course, this is going to, in this, the result of this uh, operation will only have the destination airport code added, uh, airport name added. This will have only the origin airport name added. If you want both, uh, that can also be done. You'll have to do it in two steps. Okay, so now let's take a look at plotting this airport data, just to take a look at what you can do with this information. Okay. So here, uh, what I did was I just took uh, uh, airports, right? So I'm just taking all the information from the airport uh, airport table. Of course, I have already told you that the airport table contains the latitude and longitude, longitude latitude, and so what I'm doing is trying to do a GG plot of that, right? So I'm taking airports and then doing GG plot aesthetic, uh, put the longitude on the x-axis, latitude on the y-axis, okay? and then borders state, right? So whenever you're plotting latitudes and longitudes, you can also put political borders, right? So here we are saying include this US, when you say borders state, 
uh, that is the state U.S. state borders. Okay, because uh, you know uh, U.S. has such a great prominence in the world that if you just say state, it assumes that you are talking about the state uh, borders for the for United States. Okay, so that's what is going on here, right? So show me the U.S. state borders plus of course plot every latitude and longitude point and then uh, coordinate quick map which is just you know plot a quick map so you can just use the coord quick map as it is to plot any maps that you want okay so if you do this then this is this is what you get okay so you're getting all of these uh, points each point represents an airport of course since the points are all pretty big uh, you sort of get something like a US uh, map right uh, that's what you're getting here. You're not able to see the borders themselves, the state borders themselves, because the points are all so big that they are simply obfuscating any of the lines. Uh, they are overwriting any of the lines that may be visible. Okay, so this is what you get. Now, let's say that what we want really is only the uh, airports in the U.S. alone, right? We, because these are all clearly airports which are uh, far, far away from the U.S. Okay, maybe China and Japan and so on. But let's say because we are uh, let's say we are interested only in plotting the U.S. airport. Let's see how we can do that. Okay. So uh, or alternately, we want to plot only the destinations that are included in the flights table, right? Uh, of course, there are many airport. Uh, there is information about many different airports in the airports table. It's got information about four thousand airports, but not all, all of those airports actually figure as destinations, right? So let's say that we are only interested in the destinations which actually occur in the flight table. You can easily do that. I'm saying airports, right join, right? Remember, I want to, I'm, I'm joining airports and flights, but I want to include the results only for uh, those which are uh, in the flights table. Okay, and I'm joining them by FAA and destination. Okay, in fact, I could have just done uh, join, uh, inner join, right? Because we are saying we are only interested in the matches. I could have actually done inner join instead of right join. Okay, and then I'm saying uh, join by FAA from the airports table to destination in the flights table, and then doing the same old uh, GG plot that we did in the previous case. So if you do this, then you're getting only those destinations which occur in the flights table. Okay, so the many other airports that were there. Uh, you know, there may be several small airports, for example, you saw many airports in Alaska, uh, which are not figuring here anymore. You probably saw some Canadian airports, which are also not figuring here. Uh, and you saw some airports in the Far East, all of which are gone because they are not in the flight stable at all. Okay, that was good. Uh, but suppose we say, well, how about getting a better map uh, with only the mainland airports? That is leaving out, uh, this is probably uh, Anchorage. And this is probably Honolulu. Okay, let's say we take out those two airports and get only a map of the mainland US. Okay, and also you see that this is taking, uh, when you do this, when you run this code, you'd see that it takes a huge amount of time. It takes quite a lot of time to actually complete. Okay, in fact, you may be wondering what's going on. It takes a long time. Why? Because your flights table has 330,000 rows and your airports table has 4,000 rows and you're doing a right join of uh, this processing okay that's a lot of processing for every single row it has to go and see if there is a match if there is a match included if there is no match excluded and it has to create a new big table so it's a lot of processing okay but you get the result uh, another way to do that might be to first of all uh, filter the data and then do a join okay so that's what we mean by doing it efficiently right so what I'm doing is I'm taking airports and then I am filtering only those rows of airport where the FAA is in the destination, right? So if I say unique flights dollar destination, that is going to give me a list of all the destinations that appear in the flights table, okay? And I am saying consider from the airports only those rows which are in this, right? Which means I am only interested in the airports which are part of the destination in the flight table, right? So I'm filtering the airports and then doing a join, okay? And then uh, doing the borders, etc. So this time you will see that the result comes back much quicker, right? Because we have taken out 
a significant number of airports from, out of consideration. So the joining operation that it does here will be, uh, uh, of course, we are, we are, there's no join. We are only plotting the airports, but this process will be uh, much. There's no join. That's why, right? Uh, we are we're taking care of the join by doing this, this part of it. Okay, so this is going to come back much faster than the previous one, but of course the net result is still the same. Okay, so now we'll take this and modify it to get only the mainland airports. In other words, we'll filter out the uh, Honolulu and uh, Anchorage. Okay, so this one came back much faster. Okay, how do you leave out Honolulu and An Anchorage? Okay, I'm adding additional filter conditions, right? So I'm saying, get me only those which are in the destinations and Get, get me only those for which the, uh, the airport code is not HNL, which is Honolulu, and the airport code is not Anchorage, which is ANC. Okay, so now we've got only those airports uh, which are in the destination, uh, uh, in the destination in the flights table, and uh, only those which are in the mainland. And then when you plot it, you get a plot of airports which are only uh, in the mainland. Okay, so that's what you see here. Now we can start talking about doing additional things here. We can say, okay, how about uh, plotting airports uh, in terms of their traffic, right? In terms of how many flights there were to that particular airport and so on, right? Or by delay, right? So I want to, let's say, plot this and somehow indicate for each airport what is the average delay in that particular airport, right? So in order to do that, uh, we want to first compute the average delay by destination, right? We know how to do that. Uh, so I'm saying uh, creating a data, uh, data frame or a table which has only destination and arrival delay, right? Because the arrival delay information is already there, okay? And uh, I'm saying let's not operate with the entire flights uh, table. Let's select only those two columns of interest to us, which is destination, arrival delay, right? And now for every destination, I want to find the average delay. Okay, which means based on what we did in the last class, we have to group by destination, right? That is for every destination, create a group. Okay, and then for the group, summarize it by calculating the average delay, right? So summarize average delay equals mean arrival delay. By delay, we mean arrival delay, not departure delay. And then of course, because there are, you know, when you're calculating mean, if there are NA values, it's going to uh, mess things up. So we say NA.RM is true, which means that if there's any NA, ignore it, forget about it, right? So if you do this now, F is a data frame in which there are as many rows as there are destinations. And for every destination, we have its arrival mean arrival delay, okay? So now we are plotting the average arrival delay by destination. This time again, I initially I haven't done the filtering for uh, Honolulu and Anchorage. So I'm saying airports right join. This is the old thing, right? Only thing is instead of right joining with flights, I'm right joining with F, right? F is a summarized data frame. It has one row for every destination and for every destination, it has the mean delay. Okay, so this is much smaller than flights, obviously, right? And then I'm saying uh, make the color a function of the average delay. Okay, so if you look at this, of course we haven't removed uh, Honolulu and uh, Anchorage, so both of them appear, but the color indicates the delay, the average delay. Okay, so you can take a look at this and figure out uh, which are the airports with uh, high average delays. They seem to be in the middle predominantly. I don't know why that's the case. Uh, again, we may do this by uh, uh, zeroing in on the airports in the mainland. So we can do that, remove HNL and ANC again. So we are doing that. Okay, so we are taking flights, uh, doing all of this. Okay, so this is just a combination of all of the stuff we had done earlier. Okay, so we left joining airport etc. So if you get that, then you, you see this. So this time what we've done is, uh, instead of having the color for the uh, for each point, I've said, why don't we make the point 
proportion size of the point proportional to the delay okay now with color sometimes you know people who are colorblind may not be able to see very clearly what's going on you know for example i have a problem with seeing all the colors here uh, it's not very good okay so now uh, instead of color i said let me use size to indicate the delay and uh, you know just to uh, emphasize the differences in delay i said make the size proportional to the square of the delay just to magnify differences so that the points become very explicit so if you do that then you see it like this okay so here you can clearly see uh, this is a square of the delay not the delay itself so this highest is about you know 40 something the square of 40 is 1600 so and the lowest is about uh, 500 here okay so that's what you're seeing here uh, so from this you can see that there are some particular airports which have terrific delays okay so here the biggest one seems to be this one I presume it's uh, it could be Atlanta or Memphis I don't know Memphis may be somewhat here uh, this could be Atlanta so that's a highly delayed airport there's one here and so on there's an airport here and all the rest are not as as delayed okay so this is just giving you an idea pictorially of what's going on with these delays and just for effect I also added color right so we said uh, size is average delay squared color is also average delay squared okay so now you can see uh, what's going on here so we are using both size and color to indicate the delays in the, in the flights.